everybody and welcome to my channel and welcome to lesson one of my complete beginner's guide to crochet. So if you've always wanted to have a go but you don't know how to hold those hooks, you don't know where to start with your yarn, then I'm going to be explaining all in these three lessons. Now you're watching lesson one, lessons two and three will be linked in that description box down below so do check that out. In lesson one I'm going to explain which hook you're going to need, what yarn to use, maybe any accessories that you will find useful. I'm going to be showing you how to hold your hook and yarn. I'm going to be showing you how to put a slip knot on your hook and then we're going to learn to chain. Now as most crochet projects do start with a chain, it is an important step to learn. Now once we've mastered and practiced those techniques, we're going to move on to lesson two where I'm going to be showing you how to work along your chain using this UK double crochet stitch. Now I do like this double crochet. It's a nice compact stitch ideal for baby blankets or a beginner's scarf. Now once we've mastered that we're going to go on to the third and final lesson where I'm going to show you how to hook up this UK half treble. I also do love this stitch because it gives a nice effect and then the most favourite stitch of all that everybody likes to do, the UK trebles. Now this is a larger stitch, this works up really quickly. Once you've mastered this stitch you can then go on to lots of beginner friendly projects, i.e. the granny squares. So here we go, so to start with you need to choose your yarn. Now for beginners I would suggest that you're going to get something very inexpensive like this Starcraft Special DK, I believe this is about £2 a ball. It's also, it's an acrylic yarn. Okay, um, acrylic yarn is quite nice and smooth, as I say, inexpensive. It doesn't fluff up too much, so when you're pulling your work out and then you want to start again, it's not going to fluff up too much. You don't want to be beginning with anything too fluffy. Um, these strands are going to come apart and you're not going to be able to see your stitches. Again, I wouldn't suggest that you start with cotton. Cotton tends to split rather easily. Again, um, you need to see where your stitches are. So therefore, I would recommend you get yourself a, an inexpensive ball of acrylic yarn. Also, you want to think about the thickness of your yarn. So what I'm going to do is just take this label off. Each ball of yarn will come with a label with all the information on it. So this is a double knit weight yarn so that means the actual thickness. So I find double knit a nice thickness of yarn to work with. Also the label will tell you the weight which is handy once you go on to um, crochet projects it will tell you how much yarn you need. You have on here the washing instructions you have here, this is 100% premium acrylic yarn, so it'll tell you what sort of yarn you have. But most importantly, it will tell you the size of hook that you need. So you can see here in this diagram, you have knitting needles, and then you have this little crochet hook here. And for this one, it recommends a four millimeter hook. Now on to which hook to choose. Now I tend to prefer these hooks with the easy grip handle. It just gives you something nice to hold on to. They have this aluminium part here where the hook is. You don't have to have that one. Some people prefer the whole hook to be aluminium. Although also you do have this part here where you can grip nicely. I would suggest that you go for, to start with, one of these two types. I wouldn't go for anything that is completely plastic or completely wooden to start with. I just find that the stitches don't want to slip up and down nicely. You need to have that when you begin. So I would stick 
to either one of these two so you have this aluminium part here. Obviously when you're a bit more proficient you can go on and use whatever hook you like but this is my favoured one here. This is a Clover and More. I will put the links to all of these and everything that I use in the description box down below. Now just a note, when we had a look at the label, the double knit yarn calls for a four millimeter hook. When I demonstrate, I tend to go up a hook size. So I'm going to be using a four and a half millimeter hook. When I demonstrate, it just makes the stitches that much bigger so you can see them easier. But normally when you have a double knit weight yarn, use a four millimeter hook. Also going forward, it's handy to have some of these colourful stitch markers and you will need to get yourself a nice large eyed darning needle. Now these are just blunt on one end, ideal for the use with yarn and we use these to weave in our ends when we finished our projects. So here we go. Now just for reference, I did forget to tell you this um, shade of yarn is Pale Rose. Now again, you can find this information on the label that comes with your ball of yarn. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be using Starcraft Special Decay in Pale Rose. So I'm going to be holding my hook in my predominant hand. So for me, that's my right hand. My yarn, I'm going to be holding in my left hand. If you're left-handed, you're just going to do this in reverse. So I'm going to hold it like I would do if I was holding a knife or a fork. I'm going to use this part here to hold. Now what we need to do to start with is attach our yarn to our hook by using a slip knot. Now if you know how to do a slip knot then you can just go ahead however you do yours and I'm just going to show you how I do mine. So I'm going to have the tail end of my yarn facing the front. I'm going to have the working yarn which is the yarn attached to my ball at the back. Okay, so tail at the front. I'm just going to hold that in place with my thumb. I'm going to wrap around these two fingers here. So I wrap around, right around underneath. I bring my yarn up again and then you can see I have formed a cross. I'm going to take my hook, go under grab that yarn, pull it through, take my fingers out and I'm attached with a slip knot. Okay, I'm going to do that again. So you know it's a slip knot because as you can see, it just slips out. If I pull that yarn, it'll just come out. So again, I'm going to tail at the front I'm going to wrap the yarn around these two fingers here, come across and you can see there's that cross at the top. So I'm going to use my hook, I'm going to go under that first part there, grab the yarn, pull it through, gently just take my fingers out and you can see I am attached. Now I'm going to do that again. I'm not going to use my hook this time. I'm just going to use my fingers. So I have my tail end at the front. I'm going to wrap around those two fingers, bring it across. I'm going to go under with my finger grab that yarn, take my fingers out, just pull that a little bit tighter, insert my hook and tighten up. Okay, so now we are attached. So if you need to practice that at all, just stop the video now and just keep practicing. You will know, as I say, if I take my hook out, I have a slip knot because when I pull the ends, 
it just slips out. So I would suggest just having a practice, stop this video now, and then when you're proficient, we can carry on. Now, once I'm attached, I tend to hold this tail end here out of the way with whichever hand I'm holding my hook with. What you could do when you're practicing, if this gets in your way, you could just cut that off nice and short. We're only practicing at the moment, but what I tend to do is just hold both of my hook and that tail end just nicely out of the way. Now what we're going to do is wrap our yarn. I'm going to show you how I do this, how I find this the most comfortable. You will find your own way over time of how you want to hold your yarn. Okay, but you will. this will feel very strange to start with. I suggest what we do is just practice holding and then just throw it down, practice holding, throw it down. I will show you that again in a second. But this is how I hold my yarn. So I am going to put my little pinky out here. I'm going to wrap like this. So my yarn is going to go from front to back. I'm then going to pull the yarn towards my face and then I'm going to point, literally with your pointer finger, <laughs> up to towards the sky, okay? I'm going to do that again. So you're going to put your little pinky finger out. You're going to wrap from front to back. Okay, you're going to bring that yarn towards your face and then you're going to, with your pointer, point up to the sky. Then what you're going to do is grab your work, which at the moment is just a knot with your middle finger and your thumb. Okay, now your knot should slip nicely up and down on your hook. The idea of pointing up is you want to have a nice bit of tension here. And we're going to be using our hook to work here. Now what I suggest you do now is practice holding quite a few times because each time you put your work down you're going to <laughs> need to do this. What I'm going to do in the description box below and this is why you really need um, a piece of paper and a pen is I'm going to um, put some time stamps okay so you can keep practicing, you will find where I say how to hold your yarn and I'll tell you what time it is so you can fast forward or go back on this video. So I'm just going to take my hand out and do that again. So I'm holding my tail end out of the way. Okay, I've made a fist and I put my little pinky finger out so I'm again wrapping from back to front. I'm bringing the hook around and towards my face. The yarn's coming towards my face. I'm going to point to the sky with my pointer finger. I'm going to hold my work, which at the moment is just a knot with my middle finger and my thumb. So my work, which as I say is just this knot, should just slide freely up and down on my hook. I'll do this one more time and then you can stop the video and keep practicing. Hold the tail end out of the way, make a fist, put my little pinky out, wrap from front to back, bring that hook towards your face, point up to the sky, grab my work with my middle finger and my thumb. And this is how I hold my yarn. So once you're comfortable holding your yarn, what we're going to do now is start to chain. Now, most patterns that you're going to read with crochet will start with a chain and then they'll give you the number to chain. Now, um, we're just going to be practicing so it doesn't really matter how many we do. So we're holding our work at the moment. At the moment, it's just 
a knot and we have this lovely tension here. Now to chain we are literally going to use this hook as a hook and we're going to come slightly towards us. We're going to grab that yarn with our hook. Now I tend to then turn my hook towards me and slightly down so that the yarn's not going to ping off. Grab that yarn and pull through that loop that is on your hook. So we have chained one. Now once I've done a chain of one, I push this down as far as it will go. That keeps that loop on the hook a nice size. It's not too tight, it's freely moving up and down. Okay, so we need to do another chain. So your hook's gonna come slightly towards you. I'm going to grab that yarn and then I tend to twist my hook so it's facing towards me and slightly down. And then I'm just going to gently, I turn this tool so you can see, through the loop that is on your hook. And then what I tend to do now is adjust my thumb and middle finger so that I'm, I'm always just pulling down on that loop on my hook. I need it to be nice and loose so that it'll move up and down on my hook nicely. So we have chained two, if you can see, one and two. So again, I'm going to adjust my thumb and middle finger. I tend to hold these up near the hook. So one more time, I'm going to bring my hook slightly towards me. I'm gonna go round and grab that yarn. I'm going to turn my hook so it's towards me and slightly down. And then I'm going to pull through the loop that is on my hook. Again, just push that down. So you need to do this, keep your stitches as loose as you possibly can. The reason we need to keep our chain reasonably loose is we're going to be working in these chains in lesson two. So you need to keep everything. Don't worry too much about them being too neat. At this stage, you're just practicing. So as you can see, we've chained one, two, three. So we can just keep going. So I keep adjusting my hold on my work. I'm going to go again. So my hook comes towards me. I grab that yarn, twist my hook towards me and slightly down. That way your yarn's not going to ping off. And then I'm just going to pull that yarn through the loop that is on your hook. And now you are chaining. Okay, so you can keep chaining for as many as you like. So you may be um, crocheting a baby blanket. Your pattern will tell you how many to chain to start with. I follow patterns that start with literally a chain of four or patterns that I've had to chain a couple of hundred. So it depends on what you're doing. But most patterns will start with a chain. OK, so keeping it nice and loose, we're just going to keep chaining. Now, if you keep chaining, 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 um, and you're not sure what to do, you want to start again. Say we've chained quite a few just to practice and we want to go back to the start. All you need to do with this is just take your hook out. You can pull on both ends just gently and all of your chains will just come out and you can start again. So what I suggest that you do for this lesson and begin before you go on to lesson two, is just practice your slip knot, holding your yarn and chaining. So I'm just going to give you a very short recap 
And then what you're going to do is go away and practice and then go on to lesson two. I will put the link to that one down in the description box down below. So I'm going to start by putting, mine out the way, a slip knot on my hook. So again, I'm going to wrap around. I like to use my hook, I just find it easier. I go under, grab that yarn, pull it through, take my fingers out, just tighten that slip knot up. Okay, and then make sure you're working <laughs> with your working yarn, which is attached to the, the ball of yarn, not your tail. I've done that before, I nearly did just then. Holding your tail out of the way, I'm now going to wrap my yarn around my other hand. So, going from front to back, go around that little pinky finger, pull the yarn towards you, point up to the sky with your pointer, grab your work, which at the moment is just a knot with your middle finger and your thumb, and we're ready to chain. So I'm just going to slowly chain 20. Okay, so my hook is slightly towards me, then go round, grab that yarn, use your hook as a hook, as it should be, and turn it towards you and slightly down. You're gonna pull your yarn through that loop that is on your hook. So you've done one. Adjust your hold so that you're up here. We're going to chain again. So my hook is coming towards me to start with. Then I go grab the yarn, turn the hook slightly towards me and down, pull through. So that's chain two. So I'm going to do that again. That's chain three. So I'm going to chain four. So I tend to adjust my hold, as I say, keeping adjusting, holding your work close to the hook. You're not holding your hook, but just close to the hook. You don't want to be holding it right down here because otherwise you're going to pull your chain so tight it's going to be hard to work in. So again, I have chained one, two, three and four. So I'm just going to chain 20, just watch what I'm doing and then you can practice. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. So you can see those lovely chains. Now what I'm going to be showing you in lesson two is how to work along this chain using the UK double crochet stitch but what I suggest you do as I keep saying in the meantime is just practice 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 and then go on to lesson two. Now I do hope that you found lesson one useful. Do leave any comments down below, ask any questions and I will see you here in lesson two.